Hello and welcome to Warblog. This is um, this video is looking at Ongulombashi, Namibia, Africa, nineteen sixty six. It's um, it's a titan of a game. Um, <laughs> essentially, um, this is in northern Namibia. And essentially, the um, these people, the Swala, which is the Southwest African Liberation Army, have been sort of exploring North West South Africa, or whatever you want to call it. Um, basically, um, Namibia, which was at the time was sort of under a, a, a South African mandate um, for, for governments, gov governments. Um, as a sort of South West African territory, um, I'm not sure of the exact history, but anyway, they, they, they've, they've been sort of infiltrating North, Northern Namibia. Um, I wonder if it was called Namibia at the time, whether it was South West African territory. I don't know. Um, anyway, um, they haven't really been in combat. They 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 essentially. Um, They'd been involved in a few things, which would be probably better classified as crimes. Um, they robbed a shop, you know, they robbed a post office, and killed some farmers. Um, and so essentially, they'd been started to set up a base, and this is the base that they set up in Ongulombashi. Um, and they they had trenches around it and defensive f for my, for sort of structures. And they were training about ninety insurgents there, uh, mainly people sort of. Um, recruit, recruited locally. At the time, there were only 17 insurgents at the camp when the attack comes in. Um, but it's quite famous because it, in, it, it basically represents the start of the South African border war, which is also known as the Namibian War of Independence and the Angolan Bush War, which lasted for 23 years. And um, it's always been a sort of particular interest to me. And I've never really done anything with it other than Kute Kanave, which I've actually got a book on it, and it just keeps striking me as being, well, that's just one battle. I mean, there had to be a lot more happening in those 23 years. And so this is the start. But obviously, it's a bit of a mind-bender, because what is this, 5 inches, or is this... 23 miles or 100 miles, there's no point of reference. It does say it's in the middle of nowhere. I can't actually find Ongolombashi on any maps. Uh, it's a, quite, known by quite a few different names. Um, but the, the, it's it's actually quite famous. So, so essentially it was, it was the start of the war, as I sort of said, and it later became known as Namibia Day. Well, Namibia know it as, uh, as Heroes Day. But the United Nations recognises this as a holiday in Namibia, and they call it Namibia Day. Um, I'm not sure why the United Nations knows it as something different. It's all possibly, possibly because Heroes Day, I don't know, evokes sort of something about heroes and the conflict, whereas this is a little more neutral. But either way, you know, this day is a national holiday in Namibia. So... You know, the sort of things that intrigue me really, because there's just there's nothing to it. Now the thing is, one of the things is, it's actually a um, there's only 17 people, but I've given them a company, and, and to some extent, you just don't know um, exactly. You don't. Well, I'm, I'm thinking about something. I'm multitasking my brain there. It's obviously slowing my presentation down. Yeah, you know, something completely different. But um, basically, you don't really know whether or not, you know, under any different circumstances, there would have been 90 people there or 17. You can't necessarily say. And obviously, there were 17 on that day. But what happens if they'd done it the day before or the day after? You know, at what point would there have been those 90 people or maybe even more? Perhaps they had an open day and they'd had even more people there or, you know... So I'm not trying to say it could have had anything, but essentially this is an awful big unit for 17 people, but it could potentially be half a company of 90 people. 
Um, for also, it's they're entrenched now. There was a base and they had entrenchments, but they weren't necessarily fortified. But I've given them that bonus. Um, the only drawback on that it, it will sort of triple them to three, which makes them pretty strong. And so they might the South African Defence Force might might survive. Now that said, I've given them some pretty tough special forces. Um, the only thing that's not mentioned here is the South African Defence Force Police. It was a joint effort between the, um, it doesn't say, yeah, yeah, uh, South African well, army units and police units. But the thing is, they only had eight, <laughs> my spelling's great, helicopters. So, you know, in eight helicopters, if you even had ten people, that would still be less than sort of company load. You, you know, and that's everything. So... As a compromise, I'm assuming that the police would be in there, but it might be nice to give them two units, one for the special forces, one for the police, to sort of make up for that. I haven't decided that yet, so maybe see how this battle goes. Um, but what I have done, in in the light of all that, I've given them a... a I shouldn't say UK, <laughs> because I used the UK helicopter. I haven't started playing it yet. One minute, let me just change it. OK, I've made a small change. Um... So I've now added that South African police unit that I alluded to and some air transport to get them out at the other end. Um, so yeah, so so basically there were South African Defence Force troops and also some police units in this operation. Um, so because I, the reason I put the police in as an extra unit now, I feel a little happier about that, is because if this is upped from 17 men. You, you, you know, and they've got eight helicopters. I think we can up this slightly. So any, anyway, so this is what this represents. It's hardly it's a rocket science, but doesn't. I think it all fits together. So anyway, we're starting off now. The first thing to sort of possibly bear in mind is we don't want to land here because we get shot at. So what we're going to do is, you see, this is the, <laughs> this one. It makes me laugh about this scenario because there's, there's nothing. I mean, I didn't even upload a map to base this map on. I just did a blank one, which is a bit mind blowing because the back blank one is a default of you men. So, yeah, so let me put in the South Africa. See, if I go there and there, I can siege them. Hmm. Why is it so difficult making that sort of decision? I'm going to put them both together because I don't want the police to be on their own for the irregulars to attack. Now the thing is, just to reiterate, although it's a game that is based and tied and close to and, and simulating a historic event. There's no reason to suggest that this historic event doesn't have within its own natural variance the possibility that there could have been more than 17. So we don't know why there were only 17 and why there were not 90, whether they'd all gone off into town to get some food or something, or whether or not, you know, it was whatever. So, we, you know, everything sort of balances out. But when you play the game, obviously, if I put these police units there, the Swali units will be able to um, attack them at 5 to 1. And so as a gameplay, I don't want to do that, so I'm going to put them in there with this special force unit. And so they landed in OK. So now what that means is that next turn I'll be able to attack them. Now I don't know, or I don't think it's really worth attacking now with helicopters, but I think I will actually, for the simple reason being that if I hit him, he will have to stay still in order to recover. Because if I get less than one, he'll probably just sit there and recover and it'd be a waste. See, 0.7. Now the thing is, if he doesn't move, he'll recover that. So it's the end of, my, end of the South African Defence Force turn, and they're at 0.7, but they're going to sit there, which means they recover that. Which is fine. But we can attack them again, and hopefully we'll get more than one. It would be nice. If we... <sighs> Nothing. 
OK. Okay, it leaves them exposed if we fail. Ah. I know what's happened there. I keep forgetting special forces basically have a heavy modifier. Um, I think they would have been multiple by three, so they'll probably at fifteen. Um, and this would have been 2, 17 and then the whatever difference would have been yeah, in fact that, that, that adds up exactly I keep forgetting special forces are 3 times when attacking small units they're like irregulars so that would have been 15 plus 2, 17 plus they've got a 10% surround which is on 17 is 1.7 which puts 17 up to 18.7 so a smack on and that would, they were defending on a 1, they were at 3, so that's 6. So I wouldn't really need that. Now what would that be? If that was 6, 3, 6 is 18. So that did put me up to... So this, this was sort of slightly beneficial. Obviously it knocked the numbers up a bit. Um, but we could have got a defender eliminated well badly there, and they, and they ran away, um, which is fine. Got no more movement there. No more movement there. They'd have pressed one. And they're going to run away. I could have attacked the police unit. I'm not going to bother attacking them. Oh, now they destroyed that unit. Swile up. Unit is going to run away. Why can't I pick up the police unit? Let me pause that for a second. Okay, I sorted that. I, essentially, the game's getting so complex now that I sort of forget what's what. I mean, basically, only certain units can be airlifted out. So I've put the police in here because they've got them. But in theory, the police shouldn't be an air mobile unit. But maybe they should be because they sort of are the sort of people that maybe fly around in helicopters, chasing cars after bank robberies and things like that. So, um, so anyway, I can now extract them as well. There they are. So I extract them, and there you go. So now I've gone into Ulang, Ungulambashi, I've and destroyed the base, and a whole bunch of Swala units ran away. So there you go. I mean, that's sort of the whole thing, really, in almost under 15 minutes, which is a miracle. But it's another one of those incredibly um, uh, small scenarios uh, which, which can be done. I hope you uh, make sense of that. I hope you enjoyed that. Um, I'm not sure whether you could um, do that better. Um, but, you know, if you feel you can or if you want to have a crack at that yourself, sign up and um, give it a whirl. I'll speak to you later. Cheers. Bye.